What's up guys? Today I have a very special project for you. Today I'll be painting a KitchenAid mixer. First thing I need to do is consider the artwork that is to be painted on this thing. I need to take it out of the box, of course. Take it apart, sand it, prep it, get it ready for painting. Paint the thing, clear coat it, and hopefully get it back together with all of the parts included. This is my prompt for the project. <clears throat> I call the mixer Sir Mix-a-Lot, and I was wanting Sir Mix-a-Lot in graffiti style across the top portion of the mixer on both sides. And then the phrase, buttermilk biscuits, here we go. Sift the flour, roll the dough. She continues, I give you creative freedom over the choice of font style as long as it is legible. Uh, if you want to use a brick wall, etc. I like bright neon rainbow colors. Or if you have a better idea of something that would work, I'm open to ideas. I think we can make all of this work. This is up my alley with the graffiti style, with the brick walls. I can throw some rainbow colors in there. And I think this will be a fun one. Let's get to it. One thousand bit. That is what I'm looking for. I just want to give some texture to the surface so that my base coat will stick and all coats after that will also stick. I'm gonna see if I have a Brillo pad. Bird, all right, I found, a, some, I found a Brillo pad, a uh, steel wool. Makes for a good abrasive. Um, if you're just trying to get the, the surface down. Um, it is scratchy and pokey and gets in your hand like fiberglass. I'm gonna wear a glove um, and I'm gonna go to town. The Brillo pad's nice because you can get all these corners a little better than trying to use a flat piece of paper, sandpaper. You don't need to scratch it a whole lot. You just need to scuff the surface. Okay, so this is gonna be drying while I think about the artwork. I am gonna put down a base coat, transparent base create text. This is gonna allow the paint to stick to the mixer better, hopefully. All right, my base coat is dry. I think I'm ready to go. I've been pondering my artwork. Um, we got Sir Mix-a-Lot in a bigger graffiti style text that wants to be on both sides of the top. Uh, and then I got this long string of text, buttermilk biscuits, here we go. Sift the flour, roll the dough around the outside, kind of facing facing upward on this, on this rim all the way around. I think that will be good. First things first, I'm gonna get the first lines done, spacing the letters, get things where they need to be, and then I'm gonna work on the background, and then I'm gonna work on the fills, and then all the outlines and finishing touches of everything. Um, and as always, I'm going to wing it most of the way, and we'll see what happens. So I'm over here thinking about colors. I'm going to use mostly my siphon-fed airbrushes with the regular Createx colors um, for, for most of everything, except if I need some special colors. I have a whole gamut of colors here. I'm thinking I'm going to use some of these metallic colors. That's not metallic colors. Um, some, some, that's not metallic colors. Some of these metallic colors inside the fill of the graffiti letters. That's gonna be nice and shiny and it's gonna stand out from the rest of it. The rest of it would be mostly like a matte finish, but then like a little bit of a sheen metallic look inside the graffiti letters. We'll see, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what I'm gonna do. We're gonna, that, that kinda happens itself. I'm gonna use these stencils and I'm gonna use my 
gravity fed airbrushes. I have the Omni, I have the Iwata, and these, whatever. And uh, I don't know, let's just paint the thing. Okay, I got my text laid out on both sides. I like where things are as far as the letters go. This is the main focus, the main point of the whole thing. Um, the inside of these letters are gonna be nice and bright on both sides. It's gonna be like a rainbow gradient from uh, purple to pink to yellowish in the middle to green to blue on the other side. And so the background up here needs to be real dark to contrast those bright letters. I'm gonna use white for the letters at the bottom, which means it needs to be dark down here as well. I think I'm going to add some of the dark accents, the bricks, the, um, some splattery, graffiti, grungy feel to it, and then layer on top of that some of the, the fluorescent neon colors in some form or fashion. We'll see once I get that base coat down, I have a better idea of what I'm gonna do. Um, let's go. Hold still, please. Yeah, perfect. I say this a lot, airbrush paint is transparent. It's transparent, which means when I put colors over top of this gray, you're still gonna see the gray. So I'm tinting it, I'm basically putting an undertone of color that I can color in with nice bright colors after this. What I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm splattering paint off this clothespin and I'm trying to get a nice texture kind of around the whole thing. Once I get this texture everywhere, then I can fill it with color and whatnot, and it doesn't look like it has any empty spots because it's all covered with something. I always like to just have some visual. Once I start working, once I kind of see where stuff is going in the beginning, then we can start really visualizing and being inspired at where we're gonna go next. Um, I'm being very careful not to oversaturate anything. I don't want any runs or drips in any of this. Um, if I want there to be a drip on here, I will paint it to look like a drip. I'm not gonna actually drip paint. If I do, then I made a mistake, which is, which is likely. All of these areas where stuff doesn't line up like this, I'm just gonna add splatter to it. Just add texture and other elements are gonna come into play to cover up those spots. Okay, I don't need a whole lot of texture at the bottom, but that's where the text is gonna be, but I do need color. It needs to be dark so that I can contrast it with that white text and make it pop off in the background. Um, so. I'm just gonna add some gray to the bottom and then we'll tint that with the colors as needed. You'll notice I'm doing this weird thing where I'm pulling back this. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because pulling back this chuck nut will pull back the needle farther than the trigger itself would, which gives you an even bigger opening up here. It allows you to pull back even more paint than this trigger's max distance wheel. So, if you're really trying to throw down some paint, pull this guy back. Or if you have a clog, pull this back and help work it out. It's a useful tip. That's why there's a cutaway handle right here. I've noodled it a bit and i figured out what I'm going to do with the colors. I'm going to do it purpley color up to a blue color down to a greenish color for the background on the top. Um, and well, that's all I figured out, but I'm going to do that first. So I'm going to start with this dark purple. And uh, I'm going to put it on that. I'm going on the outside of the letters. I don't want to fill the letters, but I'm not super worried about it going into the letters. 
I just want to try to avoid it a little bit. I'm gonna clean the tip dry off the front of my airbrush first so that I get a nice clean line. being extra careful of all these corners and these angles because they'll collect paint and you'll get um, unintentional hard changes in color and things and you got to be careful about the angle that you're approaching those places and how much paint you're laying down because overspray collects in any surface perpendicular to what you're spraying. Now I'm excited to get these letters started. So I'm going to do that. Oh man. Now that I've defined a little bit more where exactly these letters are going, I am going to go back and fill in the insides of this purple very, very carefully.
as you can see, I made a mistake right here. And I was spraying this pink paint from this angle, all that collected on this side, on this corner right here. Um, so now I need to do something to blend this orange color that it created with this green color that it created, because that's not okay. Uh, and while doing that, be careful not to create the same problem over here. That's probably up here too. All up here. So what color is between orange and green? Yellow is between orange and green. Uh, but I don't have a straight yellow. What I'm gonna do is lighten it up a little bit and then come back with yellow. Okay, so, hi, okay, um, I'm done with the thing, the outside, the colors, the background, the, the, eh, about it. The next thing I need to do, the final thing, probably not the final thing, there's always something else. I'm gonna put the text on it. So I'm gonna put some under it and bump it up a little higher so I can paint in my comfort zone. Painting my down here is kind of difficult. Okay, so this is going to be probably the most technically challenging part of the project. At least I'm expecting it to be. I have to write a lot of text here. Buttermilk, biscuits, here, and that'd be too big. See, I got a buttermilk, it's got to be this big. Buttermilk, biscuits, here we go. Buttermilk, biscuits, here we go. Um, I think that'll work. Let's do a practice. All right, there's my space. That'd be way too big. That needs to shrink to that size. Good. I need to reset my needle real quick because I'm getting too much trailing. And of course I'm going to have to go over and thicken these letters. Not thicken them, but hit them again because the opacity is not high enough. I need want a solid white text. I strongly considered using some paint markers for this project. It would be a lot easier.
All right, so it's almost done, I think, um, but it needs something here. It's a big empty spot, it's kind of boring. We got stuff on the back, we got stuff around the sides, we got stuff on the top, but we're missing something here in the front. Usually the bowl's gonna cover it up, but I want there to be a little surprise to take that bowl out. I'm gonna put a big boom box right here. I do a lot of boom boxes on my t-shirts and the graffiti style stuff. You got the name and then the boom box below. So I'm gonna do one of those now. did it. There it is. Um, now I'm going to cover up all these holes a little bit better, bring it outside, and then clear coat it several times. <laughs> I have to fight every instinct inside of me to keep adding more to this. Um, I have to leave it alone and let it dry. 12 seconds later. That seems to be dry. So I'm gonna do it again. All right, moment of truth. Does it still work? I hope this video was entertaining and educational. If you want to learn how to airbrush, subscribe. I do airbrush classes and lessons and tutorials and live streams, and you can ask me questions. The only thing that's left is to show you guys the final shots, and I will see you guys next time. Ba-da-da-da-da-da! <laughs>